Breaking news just into our newsroom. We have lost a titan in West Michigan, a man whose name is on several prominent buildings and whose legacy will be felt for decades. Former ambassador to Italy, Peter Secchia has died. We're told that he passed away this morning at his home. He was surrounded by his family. Peter Secchia leaves a legacy of service to his community and his country. News 8's Joe LaFergie looks back on his far-reaching impact. Peter Secchia's story reads like an American dream building a small business into a multi-million dollar company, serving his country during an event that would change the course of history, and giving back to his community, and not only by writing checks. You can talk about the money all you want and, and the donations. They're wonderful. Spirit. Born in New Jersey in 1937, he came to Michigan after a hitch in the U.S. Marine Corps in the late 1950s. He earned a bachelor's degree at Michigan State University, an institution that decades later would benefit from Sekia's love of the green and white in ways no one could have imagined. He and his wife Joan donated millions to move the school of human medicine to Grand Rapids as part of the medical mile. Ten million dollars went towards the college's research center alone. For Sekia, the school's impact went well beyond the benefits to medicine. This combined effort is an economic development project that I've not seen in my lifetime. MSU's College of Human Medicine is just one example of Sekia's impact on his community and his country. After graduating from MSU in the early 1960s, the Sekias moved west to Grand Rapids, where he went to work as a salesman for Universal Forest Products. At the time, it was a small lumber and construction company that had about a million dollars in annual sales. By 1971, Sekia was running the place. By the time he retired in the early 2000s, annual sales had climbed to $1.6 billion. As his business grew, Sekia jumped into politics. It was during the Ford administration, Sekia served as vice chair of the Republican National Committee and became friends with George H.W. Bush. I, I loved the guy. I was he did. That friendship would lead to a front row seat to history. Bush appointed Secchia as ambassador to Italy, the birthplace of his grandfather, and a key European ally to the U.S. during the fall of the Soviet Union. Secchia talked to News 8 about his close friend shortly after President Bush's death in December of 2018. He did things for the right reason, and he did them with class. Secchia remained active in civics and politics on his return to Grand Rapids, serving on a number of state and local commissions, including those looking at public pension reform and making government more user-friendly. And his impact on the community continued to grow. Secchia was also involved in Grand Action, the group that led the effort to revitalize downtown with the Van Andel Arena, DeVos Place, and Downtown Market. And he was among those who, in the year 2000, had a vision for a 1,400-acre site that at the time was gravel pits sitting on top of gypsum mines on the Grand Rapids-Walker border. We were there in July of 2000 when Secchia hosted a tour of the area to sell his vision of Millennium Park. By the end of the day, Secchia was confident that vision would be realized. Probably before we even start the fund drive, we're probably going to be very close to our goal for the first phase. He had a dream, and, and I think the best part of the vision is that he was able to start it but everybody else was able to dive in and shape it. In July of 2019, Secchia was honored with a statue of Millennium Park, a gift from his late friend, Rich DeVos, a man Secchia called his mentor. He had more influence on me than anything I've ever done. I was learning my business. I was trying to get forward. He taught me. He taught me the principles of giving. He taught me the value of sharing. On that warm July day in a private ceremony, Sekia's family and friends dedicated the statue. There were stories about Sekia's success, from business to politics to philanthropy. But there were also stories about friendships, like the local news articles and joke of the day Sekia faxed to Rich DeVos's London hotel room every day for six months while DeVos awaited his 1997 heart transplant. So I just share that insight because when people say, well, he's a little brash, He's a little outspoken, he's a little this, he's a little that. Uh, I also say, and he's a little tender inside, too. Something and on that day, the man they came to honor imparted some wisdom to the next generation. To my grandchildren, I hope you understand the value of something this dear. When your own peers, people my age, come together and do something like this for somebody else, it's something that will honor me for a long time. In Grand Rapids, Joe Lafergie, News 8. 
We're now joined live by political reporter Rick Albin. Rick, obviously there are a lot of people in Grand Rapids who may not be familiar with Secchia's work, but they've likely seen his name on buildings, like we said. Tell us a little bit about the the giant that we're really losing here. Yeah, I, I don't think you can overstate the impact of Peter Secchia on West Michigan. And you saw there the people who came together to honor him with the statue, but it was so much more than that because it's about the revitalization, the redevelopment of Grand Rapids. You come into Grand Rapids today and people talk about what a great place it is to live, what wonderful attractions that we have here, the, the nightlife and the, the vibrant downtown. Well, that wasn't always the case, to be sure. And the folks at Grand Action, with the help of people like Peter Secchia, really made that impact. And I think that is an enduring legacy, as well as the fact of his success in business. And of course, a lot of people will go immediately to his political activism, which was something that he carried through his entire life. But I, I think there's a whole lot more. Uh, there's a lot of fabric to the life of Peter Secchia that was woven right here in West Michigan. And I think people who will come for generations after a while, they will not know him personally. And in person, they will know whether they understand or not the impact just by being in a town that is as vibrant as it is now, Whitney. And we talk about his impact both in philanthropic work and politics, but hidden throughout the story we just saw was the Michigan State logo. We know that he uh, had a fondness for MSU. Rick, talk about that. Yeah, he never hit that logo, to be sure. Uh, mm -hmm. He was all about uh, going green in, in, in that sense. And, of course, one of the, the big... Uh, involvements for him is the School of Human Medicine uh, here in Grand Rapids, which really kind of ties into the whole medical mile. And uh, that was a, a very big push for him, something he uh, worked very hard on. Uh, I was there for that ribbon cutting that day, and it was very important to him because it, it brought something uh, from his alma mater and, and gave it a real firm place here. But it's also very important work they were doing that he that they are doing that he was very proud of. So uh, I think that, that the MSU connection will also also be part of that legacy, one that cannot be separated from Peter Secchi. Well, thank you, Rick. We, of course, want to offer condolences to his family. Again, this is breaking news this afternoon. Peter Secchia has died at the age of 83. We will continue to remember his legacy in the days ahead. 